This is a fun toy. I love hitting this big red button. Oh no! Because it's all made out of one steel. Shovel. Didn't weld very good. Got a bad warp in it. We gotta fix it. Stack. Okay. okay. What are we doing? We're gonna grind this bugger down and get it heat treated and maybe get it tempered too. Got some little bad spots here, but I think by the time I grind, it'll be gone. A nice thick blade. Hopefully it'll harden. Let's get grinding. Time for surface grinding. This is a fun toy. Got a six by 18 inch electromagnetic chuck. How much did this cost you buy a brand new? Uh, I don't know, brand new. They don't make them like this anymore. This is a Coville made in Benton Harbor, Michigan in 1958. Weighs 2,000 pounds. That's a big giant magnet, ain't it? Yep, turn it on, nice and secure. <laughs> Three phase power, our normal power is two phase. And I have a static converter over here, but it's made for a larger motor and it doesn't work on that motor. But when you start this first, somehow it provides that third leg it needs to start that little motor. big red button. So fun. Bam. What does this red button do? Well, that's what dad's been working on. It runs a hydraulic motor down there that's broke right now. And it makes it so you can move the table without cranking this knob. So it moves the table end to end, go different speeds too. Why would you want to use that? Why don't you just use that? Because this is a lot of work. If you're doing a bunch of grinding, like I spend hours on here sometimes, your left arm just gets worn out. But it does help create some guns. Profile away. Mark where the bevel will start, about right there. And then we'll probably have the Ricasso be about that long. A little grinding there. I'll leave that as long as I can get it. some lines where we want to grind the edge to over on the granite. So the blade is 240 thousandths thick. So we need to go to what half of that is, 120 thousandths. And then I want the edge to be about 
I want to rough grind the edge to about uh, 40 thousandths of an inch, 40 or 50. So I need to add that onto here and then scribe a line with this carbide edge. Now I gotta put a line on the other side where I'm gonna grind to. Okay. There we go. Oh no! What? The front of my caliper fell <laughs> off. It's down in the bucket. <laughs> um, whoops. That'll teach me to have a cheap Harbor Freight one. Uh, that's trust, not all of it either. There's another piece. You trust that for your uh, $30,000 knife making? No. Uh, $5 Harbor Freight? That's about 20 bucks actually. No, I'll show you what I trust for for detail work. Okay, I have layers of accuracy around this shop. So the first layer of accuracy is that cheap $20 caliper. The next layer of accuracy is a really old micrometer that's pretty accurate within plus or minus a thousand. And then if I need to get super accurate, super, super, super accurate, I have a brand new Starrett that's accurate within a tenth of a thousandth. Now it's not two different types of steel in the Damascus, so it probably won't look very cool etched, but I still want to see what it looks like. Let's cool it off real quick and stick it in acid. Probably won't really have a pattern, but it could because it's all made out of one steel. Shovel, Canadian shovel, eh? Is it really a Canadian shovel? Canadian shovel, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is a little bit of pattern, weird. not much. That's where the welds are in the steel. It's not the pattern you're seeing, but it's like where the welds are. Cause it didn't weld very good. It's kind of dirty welds. Ready to heat treat it? Heat it yeah. up to critical temperature and quit it in a while. All right, let me fire up the torch. It's something to hold it with. Ugh. All right, torch. This is transmission oil. Does it matter what kind of oil you use? Yeah, I need oil that'll cool the blade quick enough to harden it properly. What about motor oil? Uh, it's a lot thicker, so it won't cool the blade fast enough. Transmission oil is thinner, so it's got a bad warp in it. Got a bad warp in it, we gotta fix it, stack. Sometimes right after heat treating, the blade is influenceable. So if it warps, you can sometimes straighten it, although there's a chance I could break it too. So is it really that brittle? Hopefully it's brittle if it hardens. The uh, tip is warped a little bit. I might have to grind it a little shorter. That's okay because that bad spot in the blade might make us do that anyway. Man, I can't see it. Tip is going this way a little bit. I don't have the eye. The eye is a tile. So uh, run a file across it and see if it hard. It definitely got harder than it was. I'm not sure if it's as hard as we want it to be though. I mean, I'm pushing really hard on it. It won't cut any deeper than that. So I, th I think it got pretty hard. Now we can grind the scale off real quick and put it in the tempering oven. All right, ready to temper. The reason we want to temper it is because right now the blade is kind of hard and brittle. We're gonna heat it up to about 400 degrees and take some of that brittleness out of the steel and make it tougher. An electric kiln. How much does this thing cost? I don't remember, I bought it a long time ago. A couple thousand dollars, or 1500. So we're gonna program it. I don't know what kind of steel this is, so I'm gonna start with a lower temperature and we can do some testing and, and temper it again higher if we need to. Don't wanna make the blade too soft. Let's start out by trying uh, to temper it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll hold that temperature for two hours. All right, see you in two hours. <laughs> 